Greetings everyone. Just wanted to update you with the status of the JAT801 amplifier project and the speaker design and build project. So I have boards for the 801 project and that's just to test the amplifier out. When I designed the 501 I put it on perf board and it is time consuming and you can't really get all the grounds laid out that well. And since the 801 has more parts, it would be more of a bear to lay that out on perf board. So why not just go straight into having the actual PC boards made and test it out that way? Because the design is kind of an extension of the 501, I don't expect there would be much problems with it. But it still has to go through a bunch of tests before I release it. You know, I want it to be stable want it to perform well, just be a good product. So a little backstory. About a month ago, I put the schematic for the 801 up on Patreon. And the fellow who collaborated with me on the design for the 501 here emailed me and said he had a layout for the 801. So I took a look at it. We went back and forth and changed a few things and got the way we wanted and now we have boards made so let's look at it here i've been in it already i really appreciate his efforts comes in a uh, vacuum sealed kind of bubble wrap thing with silica gel do not eat well i wasn't planning on eating any but you never know here are the boards got it in blue this time I guess you don't have to pay extra for different colors now it used to be green default if you wanted color it was extra so uh, now you can get extra or different colors now looks really nice good quality fiberglass board so what I have to do now is purchase some parts. I don't have all the parts. I'm going to have to make a list and get on DigiKey or Mauser and you know buy some parts for this thing. Get one of these assembled. Then it's got to go through its battery of tests to make sure it's stable, make sure it's going to be a very good amplifier. Don't want any junk. As far as the speaker project goes, I exchanged the aluminum cone woofer for another classic 8-inch woofer, the Dayton Audio Classic Series, and another tweeter. I was pretty happy with what I was getting from the classic that I don't think I needed that other woofer. Plus, these are cheaper. You know, I'm having one already on hand just means I had to buy one instead of two woofers so now I spent 90 bucks instead of 150 or whatever it would come out to be so I have all the drivers I bought some ports I reclaimed some old connection terminals here I use those I have to design the crossover I did take measurements I'll get into uh, crossover points and all that good stuff in another video. But yeah, it did take some measurements and uh, found out some interesting things, which we'll discuss at a different time. Really appreciate all the comments, suggestions in that other video, but I wanted to go ported. Uh, I do like sealed or, you know, closed type alignments the best. However, with a speaker of this size, I think to get the base I want, really need to go ported. For example, an another comment was about the placement of the woofer and the tweeter. Somebody said, well, you should have them closer together so they're more like a point source. The further they are apart on the front baffle, you know, the highs can sound like they're coming from a different point. So, yeah, I'm taking that into consideration and move the tweeter and woofer closer together. And I'm still going to put the port on the back. Now, the size of these speakers, they're not 
huge. They're still going to have to sit on stands, and you'd probably want to set them away from the wall. So I think we're safe going with the port on the back of the cabinet in this case. Now I'm going to put this project on hold because I need to spend money on the parts for the 801 project. I want to get that done first because I started that one first. I want to get that one wrapped up. And um, funds are limited, so I can't spend all this money at once. You know, I would like to find bobbins and stuff and wind my own crossover coils. But if I buy coils, capacitors, and resistors, whatever I need for the crossover, that's going to be another 50 bucks. Then I have to get MDF for the cabinets and, you know, whatever covering or paint I decide to use. I might need to get a router bit. I want to flush mount the tweeter. Its flange is about three millimeters thick, and I gotta, you know, I want to flush mount that, and I have to, you know, flush mount the woofer here. Probably, uh, I'll probably go like a quarter inch on that. So yeah, I'm gonna need a router bit to do that. Get all that done. So yeah, I got some money yet to spend on this project. As for some other projects I mentioned. I haven't forgotten about them. One was the JAT 501 hot rodded. You know, if you want a little more power out of this thing for 8 ohm use, maybe you want to work it to 75 or 80 watts. A couple little changes that can be made to make the amplifier be able to handle that. We'll talk about that in another video. It shouldn't be too hard to make. I should do that one. Um, the other one was the son of Easy Amp. You know, the first amp had some issues with those Darlington transistors that were kind of junky. So I eliminated those. But I'm still thinking of going another direction with that. I just need to sit down with a socket board and uh, experiment with some building block circuits. See how it works out. See how my idea works out and go from there. So yeah, I haven't forgotten about those two projects as well. Expect something to come up at some point. But right now is getting the 801 done and uh, at some point getting this going. And of course we'll throw some other things into the works as well. So that'll do it. Thanks for watching.